Okay, so in this lecture, we're going to learn about the second technique of schedule compression, which is called the crashing schedule. And it's a bit more involved technique, so I'm going to take you step by step uh, and perform a crashing schedule uh, with you. Uh, we'll be using uh, Microsoft Excel to keep track of the data that we have, and we're going to be uh, using also then uh, Project Libre um, because that's going to help us in calculating our uh, critical path uh, method, right? Uh, so before we uh, get into the crashing schedule, let's have a look at some of the basics of the crashing schedule. So for this, I'll open up my notepad here, but I'll show you the steps of that, right? So uh, the crashing schedule has uh, a number of steps. There's about seven steps in total. Uh, the very first thing that we have to do is that we have to identify the important data. And there are four data sets that are relevant to the crashing schedule. So we want to first understand these uh, important data points, right? The first is something called the normal time. Now, the normal time is something that you've already experienced. Uh, when we say that an activity A is 10 days in length or an activity B is five days in length, uh, basically we are referring to the normal time for that activity uh, to progress. So the normal time is nothing exceptional in the sense that it is something that you have encountered before. And this shows us how long an activity normally takes, right? So if we don't do anything with that activity, how long will it take uh, for it to conclude if, if things went normally? Uh, we didn't add any additional people to that activity. We didn't uh, bring in any additional machinery, et cetera. Uh, so that would be the normal time. Now, if we do an activity in its normal time, there must be some sort of a cost associated with that activity. So that cost is something that we will call here as the normal cost, right? So we may have an activity A, which is five days in length, and activity A is going to cost $300, right? So five days is the normal time, and the $300 is the normal cost of that activity. Now, who tells us uh, where this cost is coming from? Of course, it is the people who uh, normally perform those activities. You engage them, uh, and you ask them how much time it would take them to perform that particular activity and what would be the estimated cost of doing that activity. And of course, you can use this idea of PERT, uh, which takes into context the three different types of durations. If you don't remember PERT, I'll just write it here for you very quickly. It's the project evaluation and review technique. And what PERT says is that there's the optimistic duration, there's the most likely duration, there's the pessimistic duration. All of these uh, things are added up and divided by six. And we have to give certain weights to these as well. So optimistic duration normally has a weight of one. Pessimistic duration also has a weight of one. And the most likely duration has a weight of four. So we put the, uh, these, um, this information into play. And this is how we normally calculate the normal cost. Uh, sorry, the normal time of an activity, right? The normal cost is basically um, the average of the cost that you have incurred for similar activities that you have performed before. Now, the third important data point is something called the crash time, right? So for example, we may have an activity A, which normally takes about 10 days to perform, uh, provided we use two people and they use some very basic uh, type of uh, machinery or something of that. Right now, if we were to try to do this faster, uh, what we will require is either more manpower or we're going to require more um, machinery or some sort of an automation to be brought into the mix. So that's going to add to the cost of that activity, right? So crashing contributes towards the uh, final cost in the sense that it increases the cost of an activity. Right? So if we're trying to shrink activity A by itself, so now we're saying that activity A is going to not take 10 days, rather it's going to take a bit uh, less time, maybe five days or six days or something of that nature. So that 
reduction in time is not going to happen free, rather it's going to uh, increase the cost of the project because we're bringing in additional manpower or some sort of capital resources into the picture, right? So that additional cost of the activity uh, or that, that cost of doing that activity in that limited time or that reduced time is basically what we call as the uh, crash cost of that, right? So, and the reduction uh, of the time period. So if we're saying that activity A can be done in six days instead of 10, that is known as the crash time, right? So we've got the normal time uh, designated as Tn, we've got the normal cost, which is Cn, then we've got the crash time, which is what is the least amount of time in which we can do an activity? So that's written down as TC. And we've got the crash cost, which is the uh, additional cost that would be incurred uh, for doing that activity. So that would include the normal cost plus that additional cost as well, right? So that's the crash cost. Now, the crash cost is, is uh, basically an overall cost of that activity. It doesn't show us how much one day is going to cost us, right? So we want to find out the cost per unit time to crash an activity. So if we're reducing, um, let's assume we've got an activity A and it's going to cost us a thousand and it's going to take 10 days. So the question is how much can we reduce it by? Let's suppose we can go down to five. So the question is how much is each day that we gain right by reducing a how much is that each day going to cost us right so item two here which is the cost per unit time to crash is uh, uh, has to be calculated and that is calculated by having the numerator as the crash cost minus the normal cost divided the whole thing divided by and the denominator is the normal time minus the crash time right so if you think about it the crash cost is higher than the normal cost. So we're going to get a positive number at the top. And the denominator, the time normal is going to be longer than the time crash. So again, we're going to get a positive number. So the cost per unit to uh, time to crash is always going to be a positive number. At the top, we have the cost. At the bottom, we have the time, the bigger numbers, are the ones that we are subtracting the smaller numbers from, right? So this will tell us how much each day gain that we're seeking to get in our project is going to, uh, to cost us, right? Number three, uh, this is an important consideration here, is that in, in the network diagram, we've got activities which reside on the peripheries, and then we've got activities that reside on the critical path, right? So of course, by reducing the time period of a, of a critical path activity, that is the only way for us to reduce the time period of the, of the project, right? So we're only going to concentrate upon the critical path activities and we're going to be crashing them. We're not going to crash the non-critical path activities, right? So we're going to look at which activity we can, uh, activities exist on the critical path. And then we're going to look at the unit uh, uh, the, the cost per unit time to crash, and we're going to choose that particular activity on the critical path, which has the least cost per unit time, because the crashing is adding to the cost of the project. So we want to reduce the time period of the project, but we want to not incur the full expense of it. Uh, in a way, right? We're trying to do it in the least amount of cost that could be possible, right? So we're going to choose activities again on the critical path only. We're going to look across the critical path and then we're going to see which activities have the least amount of cost per unit time to crash. And then step five, we're going to uh, choose that one activity which has the lowest cost and we're going to crash it by one unit at a time in a single instance, right? So if activity A can be reduced from 10 to five days, we're not going to reduce it by five days as a whole. Rather, we're going to reduce it by one day. Then we're going to recalculate the critical path. Then if we need to crash it more, 
we'll go back to our uh, diagram, our network diagram, see which activities are now on the critical path, then choose the cheapest one, then crash those by one day, then come back and, and do it again and again and again, All right? So this is how the crashing schedule sort of works. So now let me show you another uh, screen. Uh, in this, I've got a Microsoft uh, Excel uh, sheet opened up. Uh, and I'm going to show you where is my thing, right? So I'm going to show you now the Microsoft Excel. So let's bring that up. So I've, I've taken some data, right? So let's suppose I've got uh, five activities. I've got an activity A, I've got an activity B, I've got an activity C, an activity D, and an activity E. And I've got their normal times with us. Right, so activity A normally takes five days, activity B normally takes six days, C is seven days, D is five days, and E is four days, and so forth. Right, so I can have many more, uh, but this is what I have for, for us right now as an example. Right, so the normal activities are placed here. Now, the normal cost of doing activity A in five days is let's assume $300. Doing activity B in six days is $700. Doing activity C in seven days would cost just 500 and so on for D is 400 and for E uh, 700, right? So th this is the monetary amount that or the expense that we will incur for doing this project if we did this in, in uh, the normal times, this is how much these activities are going to uh, cost us, right? Now we can start thinking a bit more. So we can ask these people that, that perform the work for us, and we can ask them this question. Well, how much time can we do activity uh, A in if we were to add in additional resources or manpower, right? So let's say that our, our workers tell us that, well, normally activity is going to take five days, but if you give me additional machinery or manpower, I can do this in three days. Right. Similarly, activity B, let's assume, can be reduced from six to five days, and activity C can be reduced from seven to four days, and D can be reduced from five to three days, and E can be reduced from four to three days. Right. We cannot have zero here. Right. We cannot have an activity being done in absolutely no time. There must be some bare minimum time in which an activity can be done realistically, but we cannot go beneath that level. Right. So this is the realistic estimate, let's assume, of the least amount of time in which we can do these activities. So if we were to do activity A in three days, how much will that activity cost us? So Let's assume the crash cost is 600. And if we do activity B in five days, well, the expense that will incur is 75. And if we do activity C in four days, well, that's going to cost us 650. And if we were to do D in three days, so 600. And if we uh, do E in three days, that will cost us 1,000. So these are the crash costs, right? Now, step two was basically to apply this formula so that we could find the crash cost per unit of time. And as I mentioned to you, uh, a while ago, we take the crash cost, subtract from it the normal cost, divide the whole thing by the normal time, uh, subtract it from the crash time, right? So I've done that here in Microsoft Excel, uh, and I'll show it to you here. Uh, here's the formula that I have uh, placed into my column F here, E2, which is the crash cost, minus C2, which is the normal cost, the whole thing divided by B2, which is the normal time, subtracted from that, we've got D2, which is the crash cost, right? And I copy pasted this for each uh, of the rows here, and uh, we let Microsoft Excel do its magic. So we get this figure coming up. Activity A will cost us $150 per day, right? So if I reduce A from five to four days, that will cost me 150. If I reduce it from four to three days, that will cost me an additional 150, 
right? Similarly, if I take activity B and I reduce it from six to five days, that's going to cost me $75. If it was possible to go beneath five days, maybe to four days, then I would incur an additional $75 for that one additional day, right? So similarly, this list goes on and we get the crash cost per uh, unit of time or per day, right? So A is 150 per day, B is 75 per day, C is 50 per day, 100 per day for D and 300 per day for E. Now, the next step is that we're going to develop a crashing schedule, right? So I'll just, I've just written down the headings here of what the crashing schedule is. I've got the crashing, uh, sorry, the project duration, I've got the crashed activities, I've got the marginal cost, I've got the total crash cost, and I've got the new critical cost, right? So uh, we'll, we'll slowly move forward and start filling this out, right? So for right now, the, just the headings have been noted down here, we haven't done any crashing, right? So next is that, uh, let's have a look at our project Libre, in which I have put uh, the same information there, right? So let me share the screen with you here. So here's what we have going on in Project Libre. I've got activity A, it's five days in length, the normal time, I've got B, it's normal time, C, uh, it's normal time, and so forth. And I've got some additional information with me, which I've put here which are the predecessors. So both activity B and C have activity A as a predecessor. So that's why you see the index number one here. Activity D has B as a predecessor. So that's why, um, uh, sorry, activity D has C as a predecessor. So that's why you see uh, the number three here. And activity E has B as a predecessor. So that's why you see the index number here. So I can, actually now visualize the Gantt chart here. And in this, I can see uh, my Gantt diagram. But I'm more interested in my network diagram, so I'll click on the network button here. And now I can see my network diagram. I've got an activity A, and then that's followed by B and C. B is followed by E, uh, and C is followed by D. And of course, E and D will come to a conclusion, and this project will up to a termination, right? Now I can go back to my file here and I can click on information and I can click on statistics. And what I find here is that the project duration is 17 days in length. And I can see the critical path here, which is ACD. So if you add five plus seven plus five, you'll find that this is equal to 17. And if you add five plus six plus four, of course, you'll find that this is much shorter. So I'll take it back to my Gantt chart, right? So now I've got three activities on the critical path. I've got A, C, and D. Now let's go back to our Microsoft Excel. Uh, and amongst A, C, and D, uh, let's have a look to see which one is the cheapest, right? So if we look in Microsoft Excel, I now have A, which is 150 days, to reduce by a day. I've got uh, C, which is 50 days to reduce by a day. And I've got B, which is 100 days uh, per day, right? So out of these three, A, C, and D. Right? These are our critical path activities. You, you see which one is the cheapest? 50 is the cheapest, right? So first of all, we'll put here, that we have not crashed anything, right? So the project duration for right now is 17 days. Have we crashed anything? We haven't crashed anything. Have we incurred any additional cost over and above the normal cost of the project? So we have uh, incurred absolutely nothing. Um, have we incurred any uh, uh, total cost to, to the crashing? So we have incurred nothing. And what is the critical path at this time? It is A, C, and D. Now, we want to reduce this project to 16 days, right? So which out of these three should I reduce? A is 150 per day, C is 50 per day, and D is 100 per day. So the cheapest one here is activity C, and we can 
reduce C for the first time, right? We're reducing C for the first time. The marginal cost that we'll incur for, for doing this is going to be 50, right? And here, I've got now my uh, running total, so to speak. So I've got this plus I've got this 50 going on together. So the additional total running cost of, of crashing so far incurred would be uh, $50, uh, right? Now we can stop sharing this here and I'll go back to project delivery here, right? Uh, and go back to the Gantt chart. And what we did just now was that we looked at activity C and we said that we crashed it by one day, right? So C is now no longer seven days in length, rather it has become six days in length, right? Now, if I look at my network diagram, I've got ACD. I've got ACD on the critical path. And I will go back now to my Microsoft Excel. I still got ACD going on, right? So if I want to, uh, it's still ACD, so I'll put ACD here, right? Which is the critical path. Now I want to go down from 16 to 15 days. So in order to do this, I will again look at these three activities that exist on my critical path, which are A, C, and D. And I'll also look at C and, and, and examine this, right? I can bring C from seven to four, right? I have only brought C down to basically three so far, right? Oh, sorry, I've brought it from seven to six so far. So I'm going to crash my activity C for the second time now, so this is C being crashed for the second time, it will incur for me a marginal cost of 50 again. And now I've got this plus this new 50. So I've got my running total at 100 and C has now come down from six to five days, right? And by doing this, I can now, also go back to my project Libre and see what would happen if I reduce C from six to five days. Okay, by doing so, you notice that now all my activities are on the critical path. They have all become red in color, right? So something strange is going on. So let's see how we can grapple with this. So let's go back to our project uh, Microsoft Excel first and uh, put our information there. So now I've got ACD as my critical path and I've got ABE as my critical path. I've got all my activities on the critical path at this moment and C now is at five days, right? So now if I want to reduce this project from 15 to 14 days, I've got all these activities on the critical path. I've got all these activities on the critical path. But here's my dilemma. Here's the dilemma. So have a look at your crashing um, network diagram, right? Here's my dilemma. Here's the network diagram. Both my paths are on the critical path, right? Now, if I reduce just C, right? If I make this from five to four days, I'll have five plus five, 10 plus four, 14, right? But I'll have five plus six, 11, and plus this four, 15. So if I reduce just the C by itself, this path will reduce, right? But this ABE is still my critical path and I don't encounter any reduction here. So I have to look at a few things. One, I can have a look at the cost per unit time to crash A by itself and see how much that costs, right? So crashing activity A by itself, if you remember, 
is going to cost me a hundred and fifty dollars. Crashing C by itself doesn't give me any benefit, even though C is only fifty dollars, right? So if I am going to crash A, that will cost me a hundred and fifty. But if I want to crash something on between C D, I also need to crash something between D and E also. So I have to look at the combination of the costs between C, B, between C and E, between B and C, and between B and D, and between E and D. And I have to add the cost of crashing E and D together. I have to add the cost of crashing B and D together. I have to add the cost of crashing D and C together and the cost of crashing E and D as well together. So I have to now find out which two activities here in these four, which two, whatever combination that could be, is the cheapest versus the cost of A, which is 150, right? So I have to decide uh, something a little bit cryptic here, right? So there we go. So if I crash A just by itself, I will gain a day and my project will come down to 14 days and that will cost me 150. If I crash, for example, uh, if I crash between B and C, B and C, 50 plus 75, that's 125. That's cheaper than 150. What if I crash B and D together? So B is 75 and D is 100. So that's 175. It's more than 125. What if I crash C and E together? That's going to cost me 300. What if I crash D and E together? That's going to cost me 400. So clearly, I can't crash A because the cost of crashing K A is 150, but if I crash B and C together, that cost is 125, which is less than 150. And the, the crashing these two together is cheaper than crashing any other activity. So in order to take this project down from uh, 15 to 14 days, I will crash C for the third time, and I will crash with it B for the first time. And the marginal cost that I'm going to incur is going to be 75 plus 50, which is 125. And now my running total is going to be 100 plus this 125. So, so far I have incurred then, um, 225, right? So by crashing C for the third time, I come down to four, and uh, by crashing B for the first time, I have brought this uh, duration down to five as well, right? So let's go into our project Libre and bring C down by a day and bring B e down by one day as well. So let's go back to project Libre and uh, bring B down by one day. So B is now going to be five days in length and C is now going to be four days in length, right? And again, notice that all the activities are now on the critical path. So both the paths are now still critical, right? So let's go back to um, our, again, our uh, Microsoft Excel and have a look here. Now, Let's look at this before we move forward. I have brought down B to five days. My crash time is also five days. This means for me that B is no longer crashable anymore. Even if I want to crash it, I can't because it has been crashed to its full extent. And look at C. C could have been crashed down to four days. How long is it now? It's four days. So can I crash C anymore? I can't 
So I'm going to also make that red in color. Right? So I'll, I'll just sort of fill it out. No, I won't fill it out in red. I'll just make them red so that I don't mistakenly crash these anymore. And my uh, two predictor parts are now ABD and ACD. Right? So what if I want to bring this project down to 13 days now? What do I have to do? I've got now D and E, which I can crash, and if I, I, because they're, they're at such a junction in my diagram that I can't just crash D by itself, and I can't just crash E by itself. I have to crash both of them together. Right? So the together cost, the combined cost of D and E is 400. And the cost of crashing A is 150. So of course, which one will I crash now? I'm going to crash A by for the first time, and the additional cost that I'm going to incur is 150. So A comes down from five to four days, right? And the running total that I have here is 225 plus this 150 that I've incurred. So I've incurred 375 so far. Right. So I'll go back to my project Libre and I'll reduce A by one day now. So A is now four days. Right. And again, notice all the activities are on the critical path step. So I'll go back to my Microsoft Excel. And now I can uh, I've got both my parts on the critical path. So I'll write that down. Now, if I want to bring the project down to 12 days, can I do so? Well, yes, of course, I can bring down A from three to, uh, from, from four down to three days because initially it was five, I reduced it by a day, so I brought it down to four. Now I can go down to one, one more day, I can crash instead. I'm still not going for D and E because that's going to cost me in combination $400, which is too much. It's more than 150. So the lowest cost that we have here is for A, which is 150. So we will crash A again and bring it down by one day, which will make it uh, three. So A will be crashed for the second time. The marginal cost incurred would be 150. So here I've got this uh, running total going on. So 375 plus 150. So I've incurred um, 525 and uh, I'll again have my two parts as my critical parts and I'll just go back uh, and, and sort of fix this in my project Libre as well uh, because I've reduced A by one day so now A is at three days and of course all the activities are on the critical part right so let's go back to our Microsoft Excel again and fix up a couple of things here. So now this is what we have to note that A is now at three days and it could be crashed down to three days as well. So technically we can't crash A anymore. So I'll make that red as well. Right? Now, can I reduce this project by one day more? Of course. So if I want to bring this project down to 11 days, I have to reduce both D and E by one day. Right. So if I want to bring the project down to 11 days, I'll crash my activity D for the first time and I'll crash my activity E also for the first time. So this will go down from five to four days and this will go down from four to three days. And this shouldn't be red for right now, I'll make it black. Right, so they are at four and three. So the cost of doing this is the hundred plus three hundred, meaning it will cost me four hundred uh, in, in my marginal cost, and that will drive my running total by four hundred. Uh, so my running total will become nine hundred and twenty-five. So I've just reduced D and E. So let's go back into our diagram and reduce that by one day D and E. Been reduced. So D is now four days and E is now three days, right? And all the parts are critical still. So let's go back to Project Libre again. Okay, there we go. So, oh, sorry, let's go uh, back to Microsoft Excel. I'm so sorry about that. Okay, so here we go. Right? 
so the both both the parts are still critical for so ACV and KBV are the critical part. But note here, E has been reduced to its bare minimum. It has come down to three days. So I'll make this red so I don't mistakenly crash it anymore. Right. Now, the only activity that is now crashable is activity D, which can still be reduced. It can be brought down to three days. It's presently at four days. Right? But because both the parts are critical, I can reduce it by a day. But what will happen is that one of the parts will reduce to 10 days, but the other part will still remain as 10 days. That is, part ADE, ADE, uh, sorry, A, B, E will become 10 days, but path A, uh, sorry, uh, because we're crashing D here, A, C, D will become 10 days, but A, B, E will remain as 11, right? So we will incur that additional 100, but that's not going to uh, provide us with any gains as much, right? So we can now think uh, in these terms that we'll spend a hundred extra, but is that going to help us in any way in reducing the duration of the project? So the answer is that it doesn't. Basically, this project has now been crashed to whatever extent it would be crashed, and we cannot crash it anymore. Right? So now we'll do some other basic calculations, right? We'll take the sum of all of these normal costs here. Right? And we'll take the, this figure, 2600, and we'll add that to uh, our, our total crash cost, which is 3000. 525, right? So had we performed this project normally, the project's cost was $2,600. But having done this project in 11 days, it will cost us $3,525, meaning that it is $925 over and above that normal cost of 2600 so the project's cost has increased to $3,525. Now, an important question that should arise in your mind is, well, if I'm going to crash my project, I will be incurring additional cost. But is that cost worth it? And why should I incur that additional cost, right? So, there must be some logic behind this, that somebody must be providing you with a reason to say that crash this project for me and do it faster. And by providing you with that reason, they may be offering you some money and they may be saying, well, if you were to do this, you know, two days early for me, I'll, I'll give you $1,000. And if, if you were to do this three days early, I'll give you this much amount of money, right? So the question then is, is that incentive worth pursuing, right? What if somebody offered you an incentive and said, do this project for me, um, you know, in, in uh, I don't know, or do it three days early, right? Uh, so I'll give you um, $500. Incentive is 500 for doing it, for doing it uh, three days early. Right. So notice this, 17 minus three is 14. Right. So they're giving you an incentive of $500 and they're saying, if you do this in 14 days, I'll give you 500. So you have to have this crashing schedule done in order to, to figure out whether that incentive is something that you wish to pursue or not. So notice here that by, by doing this project in 14 days, it will cost you $225. That $225 is, is less than the incentive that uh, is, is, is a, a cheaper expense, right? And you're getting an incentive of 500. So basically you have 500 minus 225. 
right? By doing it and uh, by, by accepting this incentive of 500 and reducing the project down to 14 days, you gain $275. So should you do this? Of course you should do it. You know, but what if somebody gave you an incentive which said, well, do this project uh, incentive for doing the project in 11 days, uh, and let's suppose they give you an incentive of uh, $800, right? Would you still do it? Right? The, the cost of doing this project in 11 days is 925, and the incentive that you're getting is 800. So 800 minus 925 is a loss of $125, right? So what should, should you do then? Should you pursue that incentive? That's the question. So the answer is that no, you do not pursue that incentive because the incentive is less than the cost that you will incur for doing that project in a shorter period of time. Right? So this is crashing. This is another way of compressing the schedule of the project. Um, it's more, uh, uh, it's not compulsory like uh, fast tracking. Rather, this is optional. Uh, you have to develop the full crashing schedule. You have to uh, completely crash a project to, to a bare minimum uh, so that you can look at any incentive that's being offered to you to determine if that incentive is worth pursuing. Right? Uh, thank you so very much.